In this chapter, I'm going to show you how to work with the construction stages in Sophistic. If you want to consider the construction stages of the structure, then you need to use module CSM. The short name for the construction stage manager is CSM, and this is what I'm going to use most of the time. When should we use this module? The answer is when the stress strain condition of the structure is changing along the construction stages. Or if the structure is made out of concrete and it is necessary to precisely follow the creep and shrinkage effects of the structure. In order to do that, you need to make some pre-settings during the creation of your model. Let's review them. Where to refer or define the construction stages in your model? If you remember, first we met the construction stages during the creation of our cross-section. We had the possibility to activate or deactivate a certain part of the cross-section, even the reinforcement within the cross-section. The second occasion where we met the construction stages was in the PT editor, the pre-stressing editor. In it, we had to add the stressing of the tendons, then the grouting, and then the removal of the tendons. For each of these stages, we had to define a construction stage number. And I am just about to present the third occasion when we meet the construction stages, namely in the graphical user interface of the construction stage manager. But before I jump into it, let me introduce you the construction stages workflow. So basically, as you will see very soon, first we need to uh, fill out uh, table 1, which stands for the construction stages. First we need to define the stages of the construction. Then we need to activate or deactivate the groups within our structure in table 2. And finally, we need to introduce the external loads to our structure in table 3. When we made all these settings, then in our project folder, uh, two new files will be generated. One will be created with the project name underscore csm.dat and the other one will be created with the project name underscore csmlf.dat. The first one will contain an instruction book for the software how to perform the runs of module ASE and module AQB. And the second one will store the load cases of the construction stages. From these two files, the first one will be automatically executed when there is an apply command at the end of the input. The SSD task called Construction Stage Manager consists of three tables. The table of the construction stages, the table of the elements and the table of the load cases. And now I'm going to go through together with you these three tables which contains the main input for the construction stages. Just to refresh, let's go through the construction stages of this particular example file. In the first construction stage, which is numbered with 10, we are going to create the peers that had been defined in group number 10. Then in construction stage 50, we are going to apply some creep and shrinkage steps. Then in construction stage 20, we are going to create the superstructure that had been defined in group number 20. We are going to apply the pre-stressing forces within the tendons. They are going to be grouted for that a separate construction stage not necessary to be established. Then again we are going to apply some creep and shrinkage steps. Then we are going to add some additional loads such as the asphalt layers of the superstructure. Then we are going to apply again creep and shrinkage steps on the whole structure until the traffic opening. And finally we are going to apply again creep and shrinkage effects until time infinite. Okay, now we are going to implement these settings in the construction stage manager together. In this chapter we are going to set up the construction stages 
within the construction stages graphical user interface. First I would like to show you the suggested numbering for the construction stages. Of course you can use any number to numbering the construction stages but you will see that if you keep this numbering it will give you flexibility and opportunity to change and insert new stages at any time. So basically when we introduce a new component to the system then we create a construction stage that can be divided by 10. In other words, a new component is always created in construction stage 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. Most of the cases when we introduce a new component, then we apply pre-stressing to this new element, if there is any pre-stressing in the system. Therefore, the pre-stressing normally occurs in construction stages 11, 21, 31, 41 and so on. And of course the newly uh, introduced and pre-stressed element needs to creep and shrink. For that effect we create construction stages starting with number 15, 25, 35, 45 and so on. Please notice that between the pre-stressing and the creep and shrinkage effects we leave some space meaning there are free construction stage numbers between 11 and 15, 21 and 25 and so on. And if you forgot to introduce an element or if you want to add new elements, you still have the opportunity to create a new construction stage, for example, with number 14 or 13 and uh, activate this element in the system. Also, this type of numbering allows us to consider, for example, such an effect that we introduce a new concrete element into the system in construction stage 10, 20 or 30, but we would like to consider the wet weight of the concrete in construction stage 9, 19 or 29. In this case, the weight of the wet concrete will be applied to the structure but the stiffness of the component will be active only in construction stage 10, 20, 30 and so on. If we go on, a new question will be arisen. When should we create a new construction stage? My answer would be every time your structure stress strain condition is changing you need to create a new construction stage. For example, if you introduce a new support to your system or you remove a support from your already existing system. If your cross-section is changing in any way, for example, introducing pre-stressing into the cross-section or removing pre-stressing from the cross-section or, for example, adding a new part to your cross-section or removing an already existing part from your cross-section. Then when you introduce new elements to the system or remove elements from the system, if you activate or deactivate hinges, for example, at the end or the beginning of the beam elements. And finally, when you want to follow along the creep and shrinkage effects within your structure. Here I must mention that the time only progresses within the creep and shrinkage stages. This means the following. For example, in this table you can see that I have a lot of construction stages. For example, introducing new elements to the system, removing elements for the from the system, introducing pre-stressing and so on and so forth. These type of construction stages happen one after another. In other words, they are happening right after one another in one moment of time. Whereas if you have a creep and shrinkage construction stage, the duration of this construction stage can be defined within the stages tab of this graphical user interface. In other words, in this case the time will really fly and the e-modulus of the concrete will really change within or along the time. OK, now let's go back to the construction stages graphical user interface and create the stages for this specific example file.
I am working on the model called ptc.sophistic, which can be found on your desktop in the subfolder named ptc underscore bridge. However, this model file can also be found in the corresponding model file folder of this chapter. If I double click on the construction stages, a new dialog box called Construction Stage Manager will be open for me. In this chapter I'm going to talk about the Stages tab. As you can see by opening this graphical task, some already entered stages can be seen in the table. The software tries to realize, recognize what type of structure are we going to model. In the background what happens is that the software recognized from the tendon definition that we are going to use pre-stressing in construction stage 21 since we had to define the pre-stressing stage of the tendons and also the grouting stage of the tendons. So the software knows that in construction stage 21 we would like to apply pre-stressing. And of course before that we need to activate some elements and after the pre-stressing normally we would like to use creep and shrinkage effects. This is correct but we also need to add new stages into this table. If we, if we review our construction stages uh, once more we can see we have construction stage 10, 15 for creep and shrinkage, 20 for the superstructure definition, pre-stressing, then creep and shrinkage uh, of the structure, then we are going to apply additional dead load to the structure, then creep and shrinkage effects uh, until the traffic opening and finally creep and shrinkage effects uh, from the traffic opening until time infinite. The very last stage is already within our table but with the wrong construction stage number so I will go back and revise it. So the creep until time infinite should be with number 45. I just simply edit the value and then click outside uh, the table area. Then I'm going to select the first line which is the self-weight in construction stage 20. When you read self-weight basically it means an introduction of a new element to your system. And also the type of uh, the construction stage tries to uh, refer to this behavior. So the type G1 means self-weight or we can also say type G1 is an activation of a new element or an introduction uh, of a new element to your system. Now I have simply selected the self-weight and then I clicked on the plus button to create a new line and as you can see one additional line was added with the same type G1. Now I will just simply change the number to 10 and then click outside the table area and I will click on the stage numbering to be sure that now I am looking the stages in the chronological order meaning that the stage numbering is controlling the representation of the stages. After construction stage 10 we need to insert a new construction stage with number 15 for the creep and shrinkage effect of the pier. So I will select the stage uh, 45 because it's already a creep and shrinkage type and I will click on the plus sign again. Now I just need to simply revise its number to 15 and click outside the table area. Then finally I need to revise the type from C2 to C1 and I will change the duration instead of 30,000 day to 28 days. As I mentioned time flies with creep and shrinkage steps that's why it's important to set the duration of the creep and shrinkage step. Further important settings for a creep and shrinkage construction stage is the relative humidity, the temperature and the number of creep steps. For a short time period like 28 days one creep step definition is sufficient. However for longer durations such as 30,000 days more creep steps should be entered. If you forget to do so 
then you are going to receive a warning message during the analysis of the construction stages and the software will call your attention that more creep steps should be added. We are going to adjust this later on. But for now, let's see what other stages we must define. Construction stage 20 and 21 are already defined. We do not need to enter construction stage 22. It's automatically generated. Then we need to set up a new construction stage for the creep and shrinkage effects of the superstructure, but it is already defined. So the last two stages that we need to define is the additional dead load for the asphalting on the superstructure and then a creep and shrinkage stage until the traffic opening. So let's go back to the graphical task and do it. I will simply select construction stage 20, the self-weight, and click on the plus sign. Then I will revise its number to 30. It's going to be, maybe we can add a title to it like asphalt layers. And I'm also going to change the type from G1 to G the G2, which stands for the additional dead load. Now I will select the creep until infinite stage number 15 and click on the plus sign. And I will revise the number from 16 to 35 and then click outside the table. The duration for this creep and shrinkage stage is also OK, 28 days as well. If we review the stages, I think we have all what we wanted. Stage 10, 15, 20, 21, 30, 35, 45. Also, if we review the types, introduction of a new element, creep and shrinkage, introduction of another element, then pre-stressing. And here I notice that uh, construction stage 25 is missing, which should be also a creep and shrinkage stage. So now I will simply select construction stage 15 and click on the plus sign and change its number to 25 and click outside the table. And now we can really see after the pre-stress we have some creep and shrinkage effects, then additional dead load to the structure, then creep until the opening, and then creep after the opening of the superstructure. Now maybe we can also revise the title of the construction stages. For example, stage 10 will be the installation of the pier then construction stage 20 will be the installation of the superstructure and we already renamed a construction stage 30 which was created for the additional dead load of the asphalt layers. So now I think we are ready to go. The stages tab has been filled correctly. In the next short video I'm going to show you how to handle the groups tab. In this video we are going to discuss how to set up the groups for the construction stage manager. In the first group number column you need to specify the number of the group whose properties you would like to adjust. By default it is set to all remaining groups so all the settings that we are going to adjust here will be applicable for all the groups. But then later on we are going to change it, don't worry. So now I will set up this first line as it uh, referred only to group number 10. So in group number 10 we would like to define the peer of the structure. The first activation of the peer will be in construction stage 10, the installation of the peer. This group will be active until time infinite. Hence I'm going to leave the active till column to be equal with infinite. In the next column, at the concrete age, we can define the age of the concrete when the element within this group will be first loaded. The default value is 7 and this is what I'm going to leave as it is. In the next column, you can activate or deactivate hinges at the end or beginning of the beam elements. 
If you click on the never, basically you can drop down the list of the construction stages and simply you can set the construction stage where a hinge should be fixed. In our example 5 we are not going to use it, so I'm going to select the never. But try to imagine a case when you have, for example, a two-spun girder with precast beam elements and in the first stage of the construction these precast elements simply lift in their position and in this stage the beams are defined with a hinge at the end or the beginning however in the next construction stage when the beams received the in-situ concrete decking then the two span girder bridge is going to work as a continuous beam so you must fix the hinges in this stage and this is exactly what you can achieve with this option hinges fixed at a certain construction stage in the next column bedding activated at you can select a construction stage from which the bedding along a structural line or on a structural surface will be activated we do not have any bedding defined in our system, so this setting is irrelevant for us at the moment. In the next column, C2 concrete load from, the weight of the in situ wet concrete can be controlled or can be set up. If I drop down the list, you can see that you can assign a certain construction stage to the weight of the wet concrete from which it should be activated, or you can also choose how many stages before the current one you would like to apply the weight, weight of the concrete. The use case of this is for example when you have a cross section and it is activated in construction stage 20 for example. However, you are going to add additional part for this cross section which is going to be the bridge deck, for example, on top of this cross section, and the bridge deck will be activated in later construction stage 30. But the wet concrete weight of this bridge deck you would like to consider, for example, in construction stage 29 or in a previous construction stage. Then you need to use this option. Since we do not have this case in our example file, I will simply choose never. In the next column, the le dead load from, you need to select from which construction stage the activated group dead load should be considered. Normally, the stage when we install or introduce a new element to the system, we activate its dead load right away. So this is what I'm going to do in this case as well. And I'm going to choose construction stage 10 as the dead load activation for group 10. In the next column, fee springs, we can see a value with 1.0. To understand this fee value better, I need to explain an example. For example, let's suppose that you have the superstructure of the bridge, but instead of modeling the substructure in the very same model, you just model the stiffness of the substructure with spring elements. However, in reality, the whole substructure is made out of concrete and hence the substructure will creep and shrink. You need to consider or you can consider this creep and shrinkage effect of the substructure even if you model the substructure with spring elements. Because when you set the value for the phi being equal with 1.0, that would mean that the spring elements in the system will also creep and shrink, mimicking the real behavior of the substructure that is made out of concrete. In example 5, we do not have these kind of spring elements, so I will set the value to be equal with 0. In the next column, FAC1, you can set the overall stiffness of the activated group. By default, when you activate one group, it is activated with its full stiffness and that's why you can see here 1.0 as the factor 1. In the next two columns, Q1 
QEA and QEMX. You can control the stiffness of the quad elements in your system if you need to do so. The QUEA controls the stiffness of the shell elements in the normal direction. Or in other words, you can set here a factor for the normal stiffness of the shell elements. For the value of QEMX, you can add a factor again, with which you can control the bending stiffness in the local X direction of the shell elements. When do you need these two options at all? Well, the use case is when you have, for example, a bridge superstructure with two main girders and there is an in-situ deck uh, on these two main girders. Let's suppose you have set up a cross-section for the main girders with the bridge deck itself, similar to this setup, for example, that can be seen in the sketch. However, in the model, these uh, Cross sections are modeled with beam elements together, so basically you just have line elements, structural lines in your system. So somehow you need to provide, for this reason, normally we set up shell elements exactly at the location where uh, the in situ deck part of the cross section is located. And for this situation, we do not want the shell elements to work in the longitudinal direction. Hence, we can set the stiffness, the normal stiffness in the longitudinal direction to be very small and also the bending stiffness of the shell elements to have a very small value, but only in the direction of the local X of the shell elements. So basically, with these two options, you can control the longitudinal behavior of the shell elements if you have any in your system. Since we do not have shell elements in our system, I will leave the default value as it is now. So we are done with the definition of group number 10. We also need to create the definition for group 20, which is the superstructure. For this reason, I'm going to select the first line and click on the plus sign. And now, as you can see, a new line was added with the group number 10 and 20 active. If I double click on it, the group selector will be open. And now I will simply deselect group 10 and then click on the OK button. Please notice that you also have the possibility to select a group from the system visualization. But now I will simply just click on the OK button. Now we need to adjust the settings for group 20 as well, such as the first activation of this group should be in construction stage 20, and it's going to be active until infinite as well. The concrete age when this group will be loaded should be at day 7. Hinges and bedding is not relevant for us. In situ concrete also not relevant for us. The dead load from which this group self-weight should be activated is number 20. The fee value for the springs also should be set to 0. And basically we are finished with the definition of group number 20. Maybe now the description of the group number makes more sense to you. Because as you can see, we made a definition for group 20 and then we can also read now all remaining groups and then the forthcoming settings are available for the, all the remaining groups. Because maybe at the very first start, the all remaining groups doesn't really mean anything. But when you defined all of your groups and adjusted all the settings, then all remaining groups is reasonable. OK, now we are finished with the definition of the groups and we are going to continue with the definition of the loads in the next video. In this video I'm going to show you how to define the loads in the Construction Stage Manager. In our specific example file we only need to add the self-weight of the asphalt layers on the superstructure in load case 2. 
The way how you can do that is very easy. You just simply need to click on the plus sign and choose the load case that you would like to apply to the structure. I'm going to select load case number two, additional dead load from the drop down list. And then I need to also specify the first activation of this load, which will be construction stage 30. And this load will be active until time infinite. And in this example file, that's the only load we need to apply, since the pre-stressing will be automatically applied by the construction stage manager. The CSM recognize uh, the stage number that had been given in the pre-stressing dialog and the curvature load from the pre-stressing will be automatically applied to the system in the proper construction stage. One more additional information I would like to give here and it is the following. An external load case such as load case 2 can be active until a certain construction stage. If I want to deactivate this load case, for example, from construction stage 45, then I simply choose it and uh, that's it. Uh, the load will be deactivated from this construction stage. However, if we have a kinematic loading applied to our structure, such as positive temperature change or increase, for example, then the effect of this kinematic loading cannot be simply removed or deactivated from a certain construction stage. What you need to do if you want to deactivate such a type of load case is to define the same magnitude of the kinematic loading with the opposite sign. In other words, for example, if I have a positive 20 degree of Celsius temperature increase activated from construction stage 30 and I would like to deactivate it from construction stage 40, what I need to do is to apply a new load, a new kinematic load, a negative 20 degree of Celsius temperature change from construction stage 40 to infinite. And in this way, the second created load case, the negative 20 degree of Celsius temperature change, will nullify the effects from the first temperature change load. And now we have finished with the definition of the loads to this particular example file and we can continue with discussing the control parameters of the construction stage manager in the next video. In this video I would like to go through the possibilities of controlling the construction stage manager. As you can see below there are a lot of things to adjust or to set in the construction stage manager. Most of the cases, the default settings give you nice results, but if you have some special needs, then you can also achieve your goals by selecting the proper settings here. Maybe I will point out one of the settings here, namely the formwork placement. This setting controls how the next element would be placed in the next construction stage. Let me show you in a new picture. Now I'm presenting the handbook of the CSM and in this picture I would like to discuss the system which consists of two span and the first pan and the cantilever part is already loaded. This happened in the first construction stage. In the forthcoming construction stage I would like to introduce the element of span 2. Now I have three opportunities to place the new elements. The first option can be seen in the top picture and it is called in system position. So basically the element will be positioned as it were in the original system definition. The second option which can be seen in the middle picture shows the opportunity which is called with original inclination and as you can see it means that the new element will be inserted at the deformed node of the system but with the original inclination 
of the system. Finally, the third option can be seen in the bottom picture and it is called as tangential erection and what it means is that the new element will be inserted at the last node of the already existing system and the new element position will keep the tangent of the last element. The corresponding CADIMP input for the three cases are control count 1, 2 and 3. The default value is control count 1 and the behavior of displacement is described below detailed. Let's go through it together. So with displacement of the new element four important actions or situations will happen as follows. The formwork of the new element displaced. This doesn't create a new load as the formwork stands on the ground. As you can see in the below picture. In step 2 the concrete is filled in. This also doesn't create a new load as the concrete load goes directly over the formwork into the ground. In the third step the concrete hardens. This also doesn't create a new load as the concrete only goes from state liquid to a stress-free hardened state. And finally the formwork is removed and now the dead load is applied to the structure. The steps 1, 2 and 3 can be seen in this picture and step 4 can be seen in the following picture. So as I mentioned this is the default setting of the placement of the new elements in a system with control count 1 and this is why I wanted to go through the procedure and the application of the load and also because this method gives you the proper results in most of the cases. Now if we go back to the control parameters you can see that the formwork placement in the system position is the default setting and this is what I'm what we are going to leave as is now and from the other options control parameters maybe I would like to mention that it's also possible to run a linear or nonlinear analysis in the construction stages and also to activate material nonlinearities. In the next tab we can select the beam for check print. This is a very important option you have and I would like you to always live with this opportunity and select one or two beam elements in the system for check print. If you do so the selected beam element will be presented in the report browser in a very special way which means that the linear stress distribution along the cross-section local z-axis will be presented in every construction stages. So let us choose two beam elements. I will just simply click on the plus sign and I will select two elements by clicking on the system visualization icon then I will be able to choose two beams. I will try to select one in the middle of the first pan and the other beam element will be at the support. If the selection is finished simply with your right mouse button choose the finish selection from the drop down list. And then we are directed back to the dialog box. Here I will reduce a little bit the output for the beam start only. In this way the output in the report browser will be much clearer. Finally we need to control the text output within the report browser as we did it for the linear analysis graphical user interface as well. For the CSM what we can control is the output of the construction stages, the groups and the load cases. I will simply accept the default settings, the default output for all of the three options. And now we are finished with the definition of the construction stage manager and simply we can run this task now. Let us click on the OK button and see the results. As you can see the CSM was running through and we will discuss what went through in the background in the next video. 
In this video, I would like to go through the results of the Construction Stage Manager. As you can see, now the analysis has finished and what we can see is that after module CSM, a lot of ASE and AQB modules was triggered basically for almost every construction stages. If we now go to the construction stages graphical task and right click on it with my mouse and choose the text editor from the drop down list, we can have an overview about the TEDI input or CADIMP input of the graphical task. What we can see in this input is that at the beginning we have the control option of the CSM with all the command lines starting with control command. Then we can see our beam selection for the check print with the command SELE. Then comes the table of the construction stages where we set up the stages from 10 to 45. Here you can see the type of the construction stage. If there is a creep and shrinkage stage, then you can also see the duration, humidity, temperature and number of creep steps. Then comes the table of groups, in which you can see which group is activated from which stage until what stage. Finally, you will find the table of loads. In this case, only load case 2 was activated. And the very last line is a very important line. The command app line project name underscore csm dot creates a new dot file in the project folder with the name ptc underscore bridge underscore csm dot dot. And this dot file is basically nothing more than the recipe book for CSM, how to perform the module ASEs and module AQBs. So basically module CSM is nothing more than a controlling tool to perform or to run module ASEs and module AQBs in the right order. Later on I'm going to show you the content of this uh, project name underscore CSM that in detail. For now let's have a look at the results of the construction stage manager. Let's simply right click on the construction stages graphical task and choose the report from the drop down list. And in this case the report browser will be open. I will simply select one entry and with my right mouse click from the context menu I will choose the collapse all because it will give me a better overview about the chapters. Now I will open up the chapters one by one starting with the CSM construction stages. Here first we can see the global settings, for example the number of the construction stages from 10 to uh, 45. We can see the duration of the creep and shrinkage stages, also we can read the designation of the construction stages. Then we can overview and prove the group properties, the groups that been activated or deactivated. Then we can see the used tendons in our system. We can see their numbers, where they were placed and then grouted and then removed. We can see the additional loads in the system and you can see here that we added load case 2 from construction stage 30 till infinity. And here you can see the pre-stressing force for the first time appeared. And you can see that really the software automatically considered the right construction stage to take into consideration the curvature load of the tendons. Then we can see some nice pictures about the evaluation of the creep. On the vertical axis we can see the fee value and on the horizontal axis we can see the time. Similarly we will find the shrinkage properties of the concrete materials where you will find the epsilon value on the vertical axis and the time on the horizontal axis and the corresponding values will be plotted in table format as well for the creep values and for the shrinkage values respectively. Finally we can see a very important table or overview of the load cases. 
The reason why I'm saying very important is because these load case numbers are new for us at the moment and they are generated automatically by CSM. Let's have an overview of these load cases. Module CSM will create the so-called 4000 load cases which present the total displacements and forces of the system. Then CSM will also generate the so-called difference load cases with number 5000 and the module will also store the inner stresses from the creep and shrinkage effects in the 6000 load cases. From the 5000 and the 6000 load cases it is possible to calculate the internal stresses within the cross section and be stored in load case number 7000. Finally, CSM will also store the primary and the secondary effect of pre-stressing in the construction stages, respectively. To review the special load cases, let's go back to SSD. After having run the construction stages successfully, you will find new four-digit number load cases, such as 4010. This is the first load case of the construction stage manager. I will now simply stop the animation by going to the System Visualization tab and click on the Freeze Image button. Now I would like to explain the idea behind these four digit load cases. By default the software assumes that we will need maximum 999 load cases or 999 stages to build up the overall construction of the structure. Hence, the last three digits from this 4000 load cases is the number of the stage, the number of the construction stage. And the first number of this four digit load case number explains or shows what type of load case are we facing with. If the default number of construction stages, the 999, is not enough for you, then you can use, of course, more construction stages. However, then this four-digit load case number will change into a five-digit load case number. But the starting number will always remain four, five, six, and seven. To review the results or the deformations of the construction stages, the best practice is if we stop the animation with the freeze image icon and then we set a constant amplitude here. For example, I will simply type in 1000 and then we will see all the load cases with this magnitude. The first case that is being presented at the moment is the 4010, the installation of the pier. Then comes the first creep step in 4015. We can see hardly any difference between the two. However, if I increase the amplitude, we can see that from load case 4010 to load case 4015, the pier uh, shrink according to our expectations. Then in the next construction stage comes the installation of the superstructure. Now the deformation is a little bit too big, so I will just set back 100, for example. As the superstructure has been introduced to the system, it already deformed because the self weight has already been considered in this construction stage. In the next stage we can see the pre-stressing of the system. As we saw, there is a little bit difference between the deformation from the self weight to the pre-stress. Then we also applied some creep steps, one creep step actually. Then we applied the weight of the asphalt layer in construction stage 4030. You can see some more deformations. Then finally we applied creep until the traffic opening. Actually I forgot to override the title of this construction stage since the title should be correct if creep until traffic opening were here. Anyway, in the last construction stage, 4045, there is the creep until infinite. We can see how big the difference in the magnitude of the deformation between the creep steps that is 28 days long 
and uh, creep until time infinite which is roughly 30,000 days long. Okay, so now we reviewed the 4,000 load cases which are presenting the total deflections of the construction stages. In other words, these are the load cases that are showing the construction as we were on the side and see how the structure is being built. The CSM also produces different type of load cases such as the 5000 load cases. The 5000 load cases are the so-called different load cases and the best to illustrate is if I show you the pre-stress construction stage for example 5021 and here you can see that the nodal de deformation points in the positive global Z direction because the pre-stress applied to the structure. However, if we look at the installation of the superstructure, we will find a deformation pointing in the negative global Z direction. Or for example, after the pre-stress, if we look at the effect of the creep and shrinkage in construction stage 5025, we will see that the effect or the deformation of the nodes pointing in the negative global Z direction. Apart from the 4000 and 5000 load cases, CSM also generates a special load case for ELLA in 14999. This load case could be necessary and important if the activated groups plays an important role in the traffic loader analysis because ELLA is use, using the very last stiffness matrix that is stored in the database. This means that for example if in our system some of our groups are deactivated in the last construction stage of the CSM then module CSM will store the stiffness of this very last construction stage for ELLA to use for the traffic loader analysis. In our example file it was not important because in the linear analysis we activated all the groups. We assume that at the end stage all the groups of our model will be activated and that therefore after the linear analysis we were able to simply run the traffic loader task based upon the stiffness matrix that came from the linear analysis and in the linear analysis we activated all the groups. Last but not least, module CSM also generates two load cases for the primary and for the secondary effect of the pre-stress and stores them in 15,021 and 16,021 respectively. The first two digit, the 15 and the 16, is always fixed and the last two or three digits is taken over from the construction stage where the pre-stress is happening. The reason why these two load cases were generated is that during the design procedure in some of the codes one must apply different factors for the primary part of the pre-stress or the secondary part of the pre-stress. In the next slide I would like to go through what's going on in the background in CSM. Let's suppose first we introduce a part of the structure in load case 4010 and then we pre-stress it in construction stage 4011 and in the next construction stage load case 4015 we apply some creep and shrinkage steps. What happens internally and what are those load cases? This is what I'm about to explain. So we already saw that the load case 4000s are accumulative load cases. They are showing the total displacements of the system. However, to be able to follow the creep and shrinkage effects precisely, we need to store the so-called difference load cases. For example, the difference load case of 5011 is obtained from load case 4010 and load case 4011. In other words, it shows the difference from load case 4010 to 11. The difference load case of 5010 is the difference from 0 to 4010. 
So basically it matches up with load case 4010. Then after the pre-stressing stage 4011, we apply the creep and shrinkage effects. At this stage we need to use another type of load case, namely the 6000 load cases, to store the loss of the stresses in the tendons within the cross section. And the way how CSM does it, I can illustrate the best in the next slide. So here is our system, a single span beam, the G, so the dead weight of the structure and the pre-stress already applied to the structure. And now we apply the creep effects on the structure too in load case 4015, as we saw in the last slide. Basically due to the creep and shrinkage effects and the relaxation of the tendon, the tendon stress will be decreased by a delta sigma P pre-stress. Parallel, the concrete stress will change to hold the constant existing external bending moment. This change in the stress, the delta sigma, is basically stored in the 6000 load case and this effect is the primary part of the creep and shrinkage and it is acting on the pure cross section or simply on the cross section. However, since our structures are normally statically indeterminate, the deformations caused by the creep on the pure section cannot happen freely or in a free way and because of this a secondary part of the creep and shrinkage effects will occur and it is going to be applied to the structure in the form of a curvature load in a forthcoming ASE run. Finally, the corex stress strait of a cross section can be extracted or obtained if we combine all of the before said or before mentioned parts. So basically we need to combine the differential case 5010 which is coming from the sulfate of the structure and add the differential case 5011 which is the part of the pre-stressing then add the differential case of the creep step and the inner stress part of the creep step and this combination will be stored in load case 7015. So now you may understand the numbering of the construction stage manager. Load case 4000 shows the accumulative load cases or the sum of displacements. Then CSM also stores the differential displacements of the stages. It also needs to store the internal stress change within the cross section and finally it needs to accumulate the stresses in the cross section and store these stress results in load case 7000. In the coming slide I would like to point out uh, the difference between the 4000 and 5000 even better. So for example if I add the load case 4000 on the right side which shows the accumulative displacements and internal forces of the system and I will set on the left side comparable the 5000 load cases. So for example 5010 and as I mentioned load case 5000 is always a differential load case which means you need to subtract the current 4000 case the preceding 4000 case. However, for load case 4010, there is no preceding case or there is the zero case. So actually, if I deduct a zero value from every value of this bending moment diagram, I will receive the same diagram. And this is what is happening. Actually, load case 5010 is exactly the same as load case 4010. However, if I now bring the results of the load case 5011 and we are reviewing the maximum bending moment above the middle support, what we need to do to get the values or the results of load case 5011 is to subtract 
the bending moment minus 8353 from the bending moment minus 55.3 kilonewton meter. If we write it down, we can follow it. So minus 55.3 minus minus 8353 gives us the results plus 8298 kilonewton meter. And this is exactly what we are getting as the result in load case 5011. In the next stage, to get the results of load case 5015, we need to subtract the bending moment minus 55.3 kilonewton meter from the bending moment 62.6 kilonewton meter gives us minus 7.3 kilonewton meter which can be seen in this diagram exactly. Please also notice how nicely shows the differential load case the effect of a certain case. What I mean is for example here we can see the self weight of the structure very nicely. Also in this bending moment diagram we can see the effect of the pre-stress and in the last differential load case we can very nicely see the bending moment diagram from the pre-stressing. These effects cannot be seen from the 4000 load cases because they are accumulated load cases. And although the load case 4000 seems to be more reasonable to review, the creation or the existence of the 5000 load cases are very very important if we want to perform the design of the structure. The reason is simply that in the design procedure we need to use different factors for these different effects that are so stored in these load cases. For example the factor for the self-weight is different from the factor of the pre-stressing or the creep and shrinkage effects. I think I have shared all the information that I know about the used load cases in CSM and we can continue with where these load cases physically stored in the next video. In this video I'm going to show you and explain a little bit about the load cases that are being stored in the CSM run. If we go back to SSD and click with my right mouse button on the construction stages graphical user task you will see the underlying CADIMP input of the CSM. We already discussed the structure of this input and I mentioned that the project name underscore CSM dot dot will be created and additionally to this dot file an other file is being created and it is called the project name underscore CSM LF dot dot. The suppression L and F stands for the German word Lastfall, which means load cases. So actually what's happening in the background is the module CSM create a file for the load cases only and the name of it is project name underscore CSM LF dot dot. You can find both of these files, the underscore csm dot dot and the underscore csm lf dot dot in the project folder. It is very easy to reach the project folder from the SSD. We just need to go to the Home tab and there click on the Explorer button. Then you will find yourself in the project folder and you will be able to see and find the project name underscore csm lf dot dot file and with a double click it will be opened by Teddy. After having double clicked on the file you need to adjust the window of the Teddy a little bit and then we can see and read the content of this file. What you can find here is the load cases with 5000 and 6000 numbers. So basically you will find the difference load cases and the creep and shrinkage load cases in this file. Of course you will only find a 6000 load case if creep and shrinkage really happening in that particular construction stage. 
For example, in load case 10, we just introduced the peer of our system. There was no creep and shrinkage effect at all, therefore we can only find load case 5010. However, in the next construction stage, namely in construction stage 15, we applied creep and shrinkage to the structure with a length of 28 days, and for this reason we will find also load case 6015 among the load cases. We can also find the type of the load cases here. For example, G underscore is the self-weight type of action. C underscore 1 is creep until traffic opening. C underscore 2 is creep until infinity. What is more important is the parameter CST and the number, because this describes the part of the cross-section on which the loading is applied to. For example, in load case 5020, the cross-section contains a hole for the duct, so the area of the duct will be deducted from the gross cross-section, and therefore the properties of the cross-section in this stage is different from the one, for example, in construction stage 21, because in construction stage 21, the hole for the duct is grouted, and consequently, the properties of the cross-section changed as well. And this is what is described with the parameters CST21 and then parameter REF PART. So these two means that the software will take only the partial cross-section from construction stage 21. Finally, with the parameter SUP and PERM, the superposition behavior of that particular load case is described. And as you can see in this case, all of the load cases that can be found in the underscore csmlf.dot file behave as permanent type of load case in the superpositioning. Finally, you can see the gamma unfavorable and favorable safety factors respectively. And now I would like to refer back to what I just said previously. Why is it important to store the differential load cases? And as you might remember, the answer was that with this approach, we can use different safety factors for the different creep and shrinkage effects, such as 1.35 unfavorable safety factor for the undetermined part of the creep and shrinkage effects, and 1.0 unfavorable safety factor for the primary part of the creep and shrinkage effects. One more important piece of information that worth mentioning is that this underscore csmlf.dot file also stores the primary and secondary effect of pre-stress in the construction stages with number 15,000 and 16,000. Since now we know how the loads and the load cases are stored in our project folder, we can have a look at the execution of the construction stages in the underscore csm.dot file in the next video. In this video I'm going to show you how the construction stages are executed in the underscore csm.dot file. Since we are in Teddy, the text editor, we can simply open the project underscore csm dot. We just need to click on this open icon and then choose the project underscore csm dot from the project folder. Then I will click on the open and now it has been loaded. You can find and read the name of the opened file here in the top line. You will see ptc underscore bridge underscore csm dot. And if you want to go to the beginning of this input, you just simply need to click on this ptc underscore bridge underscore csm dot dot on the left side. And the cursor will blink at the starting position of this file. On the left side we can found the model tree, which we can turn on or off with this button here. Now it is closed, now it is opened. And in this module tree we can easily navigate by clicking on the chapter's name. 
For example, I clicked on the primary and secondary effect of the pre-stress in the construction stages and on the right side you can see that my cursor is blinking at the very same chapter. Also, if I click on, for example, a module name, then this module will be presented on the right side. In this way, the navigation in this text input is very easy. So now let's go back to the very, very beginning of this project and try to go through and understand the input together. As the first command, we will find hash defined project equals ptc underscore bridge. What does it mean? By now you know that Sophistic is working around the central database, the CDB. You can write in or read out information from the CDB. And it's also very important to mention that every CDB has a name. In our case now, the CDB that we would like to use is the ptc underscore bridge dot CDB. If we would like to reach and modify, read in, or read out information from the CDB, we need to somehow refer to it and access it. And this is exactly what we are doing with this hash define command. We define the project that we would like to access. You always need to add this command line if you want to access the CDB from outside. Now we are in the ptc underscore bridge underscore csm dot dot file. By default, automatically, the software thinks that we would like to use and work with the ptc underscore bridge underscore csm dot cdb. However, this is not the case. We would like to access the ptc underscore bridge dot cdb. And that is why we need to add this hash defined project equals command. If we are working in SSD, the situation is different. Every task that we create here in SSD will use and work with the ptc underscore bridge dot cdb. So if you prepare a Teddy input within SSD, for example, when we define the R sets for springs, we didn't have to add this hash define project equals command since we were using the same CDB that we worked in. Please notice that in the ptc underscore bridge underscore csm dot file basically we are working with or we are using the modules ASE and AQB. Just to refresh our memory, module ASE stands for the Advanced Solution Engine, so basically it's a solution module. And module AQB stands for the design of the beam element, especially the cross sections of the beams. And now we will learn a little bit how AQB is working. Now let's go back to the right side. Here we will find a so-called text block. We already met this one in the Teddy introduction. And we are defining an as a control text block with the help of the hash define and hash and def commands. The reason why we do this is simple. We would like to use this text input many times in our input later on. So here we define it and then later on, for example, in this as a run, we include this text block. Very similarly, we define an AQB control text block with the hash define and the end def commands. And we use this text block to control our AQB and for example here at the very first AQB we include this text block. So by using these text blocks we can spare a lot of time because we do not have to retype the same text many more times in our input. Finally we can find one more text block input which will be used later on in the design of the beam elements and with which we instruct module AQB to consider the cross sections according to the construction stages automatically. So basically to follow the changes within the cross section automatically. Okay, after the first text blocks comes the first ASE and as you can see this is the chapter CSM construction stages. As you might remember, I mentioned to you earlier in the CSM input 
that basically the construction stages graphical user interface makes nothing else than create a recipe book for module ASE and AQB how to perform these construction stages. And this is exactly what we can see here. We will find a lot of ASE and AQB modules running one after another. Let's start with the first ASE run. We can read in the heading what's happening here. Basically, this is the first construction stage, CS10, installation of the peers. Then we include the text block as a control that we had defined previously. In the next command line with the syst plc minus command, we set up the system from a previous primary load case. Of course, at the very beginning, we do not have any primary load case whose stress and strain condition we would like to set up. Therefore, we can see the minus sign here. Then we can see the group command. With this command line, we instruct module ASE how to consider a certain group or consider a certain group at all. In this case, for example, we activate group number 10 in construction stage 10. We consider the age of the concrete to be seven days old when it gets its self weight. With the next parameter FACD1, so basically fuck D, we can define the self weight of the structure with a factor of 1.0. With the parameter hinge, all the hinges are active, so it means they are free if there is any defined in the system. With the parameter fuck B equals with 0, we are not considering any bedding applied to this group. And finally, with the parameter CSDL, we can instruct the software to consider the self-weight of this group in a later construction stage. However, this is not the case. We would like to consider the self-weight of this group from the activation, so in construction stage 10. In the next command line, with the command LC, we set up a new load case, 4010 to analyze with module ASE, since this module is a solution engine, so it needs to calculate a certain load case. At this point, you might ask yourself, OK, but what loads are in this load case? Basically, the loads that will be calculated within this load case is the self weight of group number 10, because with this parameter fuck t, we activated the self weight of the group based upon the cross-section properties and the length of the beams, for example. Finally, we end the module with the command end and the first ASE run is ready to run. After having run this first ASE, a module AQB will be triggered. Again, in the headline, we can get some information what's going on in this run. After the first construction stage number 10, we are going to calculate the creep and shrinkage effects in construction stage 15. It is very important to mention that after having run the first ASE, load case 4010 has been analyzed and stored in the database, but also the first differential load case has been saved to the database, which is load case 5010. In module AQB now, we will need this load case 5010, and that's why I mentioned it. Basically, with this command line LC5010 in module AQB, we select this load case to be used. With the help of command COMB, we can combine together load cases within module AQB. And it is very important to emphasize that only in module AQB with the command COMB we are able to combine results in the level of the cross sections. So basically what we are doing here, we are combining together the stress and strains within the cross section with parameter SUM, which means a summation of the stresses and the strains from type G load cases, which in this case load case 5010, multiplied with a 1.0 factor, 
and stored it in a new load case 6015 in which the construction part 15 will be considered and what we would like to combine together with this type G effects the internal stresses uh, from the creep and shrinkage effects within the cross section and we can add it to this combination with the command Eige which is coming from the German word Eigenstresses which means internal stresses so basically once more we are combining together the internal stresses from the creep and shrinkage effects and the internal stress strains from the differential load case to determine the internal stresses from the creep and shrinkage we need to use group 10 which material is number 11 the duration of the creep is 28 days the first loading of the material is day number 7 the shrinkage of this material started at day number 3 the relative humidity to consider for the creep effects is set to 70 percent and the temperature to consider for the creep and shrinkage effects was set to 20 degrees Celsius. Finally, in the next Eige command line, we activate the tendon relaxation by choosing material number 4, which was the material of the tendons. And then we finish the first AQB module with an end command. After having analyzed the first AQB, a force coming module ASE will be triggered in which we are going to set up our system based on primary load case 4010 and with the help of command CREP, which stands for CREEP, we are going to apply our previously calculated CREEP effects to the structure and analyze it with the help of module ASE. So we are going to perform a creep analysis within one step. The duration of this will be 28 days and we are going to use the real creep values from CSM and the module AQB is going to calculate the creep effects on the beams. As you may now know, you need to define which group is activated or deactivated within module ASE. Still our only activated group is number 10. Now the properties of cross section 15 should be considered in the system. The age of this group 10 will be 35 days old. Still we are activating its self weight with the parameter FACD. The hinge and bedding and self weight activation is the same as previously was. And now we can see two new parameters, the phi and epsilon. These are the creep and shrinkage values respectively and they were automatically calculated in the previous AQB run and automatically taken over to this module ASE run. Then as usual we need to set up a new load case to be analyzed with module ASE which will be in this case 4015 and simply we copy over the load case 6015 which is, which is a new appearing load case in our system at the moment and which contains the effect of creep and shrinkage from the previously calculated AQB run. We must apply this load case to the system because in load case 6015 the primary effect of the creep happened but since our structure is statically indetermined, the primary effect will cause secondary effect on our structure. And this is what we can calculate with the help of module ASE. Finally, we end this module ASE with the end command again. Now we are going to calculate the new construction stage number 20. We will continue working with module ASE. Since we remain in the same module ASE, we do not need to write out again the plus prog ASE. We just simply need to use the head and the end command. And the software will know that we still want to use the module ASE to run or trigger this input here.
You can also read a comment regarding this, which says here, run this load case in the same prog ASE module, and this will lead you a much faster analysis of this load case. Okay, what can we find in this ASE run? After having inserted the same ASE control text block, we will set the system to the primary load case of 4015. So the stress strain condition of primary load case 4015 will be taken over in this ASE run. Then we are going to activate group number 10 according to the cross-section number 20. So we are going to consider the cross-section properties of group 10 with the available cross-section properties from construction stage 20. The age of this group at this point is 35 days. The self weight of this group is still activated with a 1.0 factor. The hinges, if there are any, are activated. The bedding, if there is any, activated as well. And the self weight of this group is activated from construction stage 20. As a new command line, we will find group 20 to be activated. This means that we activate the new group, the superstructure, because we defined in group 20 the superstructure. And now this parameter CS20 plays a very important role. So again, what it means is that we are going to consider the elements in group 20 to be activated with the available cross-section properties from construction stage 20. So the cross-section properties in cross-section stage 20 is different than from the forthcoming construction stage 21, for example. Therefore, this parameter CS for a particular group plays a very important role. Let me describe another example. Let's suppose we had a cross-section which has an in-situ part activated in a later construction stage, for example in stage 30, then it matters a lot which part of the cross-section is activated at the current construction stage. Is it the overall gross cross-section or just the part that is activated here in the current stage? In the next parameter T1 we can see the age of the concrete which for this group 20 is only 7 days. The self weight of this group is also activated with a factor of 1.0. And what is worth mentioning here is the parameter PLC. Since group 20 is activated for the first time in this construction stage, the primary load case to be considered for this group is 0, which means this is a new group. If this weren't the case, then the primary load case stress and strain condition would be taken over from load case 4015, so the preceding load case. And this is exactly what's happening. For example, group 10 was activated previously in construction stage 10, so the primary load case of group 10 is taken over from the preceding load case, which was 4015. Finally, we can see load case 4020 to be analyzed as a new load case. And again, the question is what is going to be within this load case 4020 to be analyzed with the certain properties of group 10 and 20. Then this other run ends with an end command. But as you can see, the new uh, other run starts with a head right after it. So basically this procedure goes on and on in the CSM dot file. In this other run we consider the pre-stressing construction stage. Again we consider the previous load case 4020 internal stress strain condition. Activate group number 10 and group number 20 with the cross section part 21. So it means that still the cross-section contains the hole for the duct and we are analyzing load case 4021 which contains the self weight of group 10 and 20 plus an additional new load case 
namely load case 11 which contains the curvature loading of the pre-stress and the parameter PLC new means that it is acting for the first time in the system. The command LCC means load copy. So basically we copy in load case 11 into load case 4021 and then we finish this other run again. Then we continue with a new AQB run. In this AQB run you will see all the load cases up to this construction stage selected or listed, such as for example load case 5010 with the action type G underscore 1, load case 5015 with the action type C underscore 1, so it's a creep and shrinkage type of action that the load case 5015 is assigned to, then load case 6015, then load case 5020 and 21, which is assigned to action type P. Please notice that as I mentioned it is very important that which load case is acting on which cross-section part. Then, like in the previous AQB run, we make a combination of the strains and stresses. We summarize together the effects of the self-weight action G with a factor of 1.0, then effect of the pre-stressing with a factor of 1.0, and the effects from the creep and shrinkage load cases with a factor of 1.0. We store the results of this combination in load case 6025 with the cross-section cross part 25 and in the next command line we include the internal stresses from creep and shrinkage effects in this combination of group 10 and group 20 with the corresponding material and the corresponding time period and we also activate the tendon steel relaxation with the help of the last IGE command. If it is finished, then we can apply the load case 6025 in the forthcoming ASE run. We set the primary load case to be equal with 4021 and we apply the creep and shrinkage effects in one creep step. In this creep step the group 10 and 20 will be activated and the creep and shrinkage values will be taken over automatically from AQB. Finally, with load case 4025, we are going to calculate a new load case into which we are going to copy in load case 11, which is the curvature load of the pre-stressing and it is already applied in a previous stage and we will also copy in load case 6025 from the preceding AQB run as a new load. Then this other run also finishes and so on and so forth. I'm not going to continue. Basically the same procedure is going to happen many times in the CSM dot file until we reach our very last construction stage. So basically this describes the first chapter of the CSM dot, how the construction stages are performed. In the next video we are going to deal with how the primary and secondary effects of the pre-stressed in the construction stages are handled. In this video I would like to show you how the primary and secondary effects of the pre-stress is handled in the construction stage manager. So again we are working in module ASE and what you can see here as the first command line in this is this control Andre 1. This command instructs the software to store only the primary part of the pre-stress. The secondary effects of the pre-stressing of load case 5021 will be stored and the parameter diff1000 means that 1000 will be added to the storage load case which is 15021 so basically 
The secondary effects of the pre-stress will be stored in 16,021. But the primary part will be stored in 15,021. And only one load case will be copied in into this load case 15,021, namely the curvature loading of the pre-stress. Then the first ASA ends and load case 15,021 and 16,021 will be calculated and stored in the database. But to have a nice an overview, in module SOFI load, this load case 16,021 that is stored in the database will be renamed as the secondary effect CS21. After the first uh, as a run, we can find a second one which is for to create a final stiffness matrix for the force coming ELA module, which is the traffic loader module. What the software does is actually considering the group settings according to construction stage 45 from the CSM, which is basically the last construction stage in our system, and calculates load case 14,999 with a factor of that load being equal with 0 0.001. So basically there is a very, very minor loading in our system because the purpose of this ASE run is not to get results, but to set up a final stiffness matrix for the traffic loader task. So to sum up, in this chapter, basically three new load cases are being created. One for the primary part of the pre-stress, one for the secondary part of the pre-stress, and finally one load case for the stiffness matrix for module ELLA. In the next video, we are going to discuss together the check print stresses in the construction stages. In this video, I would like to go through the check print stresses in the construction stages. As you can see, we work in module AQB and input starts with the usual head command where we describe what this, the below commands are all about. Then we will find some echo commands that will control what will be printed in the report browser. The default setting of the echo commands usually suits to our needs. Then we can find some control option with, with which we can take into account, for example, the reinforcement in the creep and shrinkage steps or taking into account the normal force change in the longitudinal reinforcement design. After the first echo and control command starts the real input. In module AQB, we always need to make a lot of preparation work before we trigger the real design command. First, we need to select the beam to be used or to be designed, in this case to be check printed. Then we need to select the load cases on which we would like to perform the design or the check print. If we want to use more than just single load cases, we must create combinations. And when we finished with all the combinations, then we can trigger the design command, which is in this case would be to print out the stresses, the elastic stresses. But let's go through the command lines one by one. So if we just go back, as I mentioned, first we need to select the beam. This can be done with the command beam. Then we just simply need to enter the number of the beam. As you can see here, we selected a beam from group 20 with the number of 17. We are going to investigate only at the beginning point of the beam element, which is at x0 meter. The construction stages of the cross section of this beam is set to automatic with this parameter CS auto. And it means that we let module AQB to consider in which construction stage which cross section part was activated. Then we need to select the load cases. Here you can see a very special input, a new syntax. 
I could write here LC 5010, 5015 and so on, one by one. Or instead of it, I can use LC 5 and then 3 question marks, which means that module AQB will select or read in all the load cases starting with digit 5 and it has 4 digits altogether. And then they are also need to be available in the database. Similarly, we can select all of the 6,000 load cases, the 15,000 load cases, and the 16,000 load cases. The next command line, echo force yes, will print out all the load cases that had been found in the database. Okay, so now we have selected the beams and we selected the load cases. So if we stopped here and go for the command stress elastic, then the elastic stresses would be calculated in these two beam elements that we had selected and it would be presented in the report browser but only from these single load cases. Of course we do not want that. We would like to make combinations and get the stresses at the end of the construction stages. Therefore, we need to summarize or combine together the stress stain condition of our cross sections. Therefore, we continue our input with the command COMB with which we can create combinations. And in this case, the single load cases will be not evaluated in the report browser, but the combinations. Let's see what kind of combinations are we creating in this check print. First we create a solo combination only about the differential load case 5010. Then in the next combination line we make a summation of load case 5015 and load case 6015. So in this combination the two different parts of creep and shrinkage effects is contained. So in this combination the two different parts of the creep and shrinkage effects are contained, namely the 6015 which is the internal stress losses due to the creep and shrinkage effects and load case 5015 which contains the redistribution due to the creep, creep curvature. Then it is followed by a solo combination of load case 5020, which was the installation of the superstructure. Then one more solo combination of the pre-stressing stage 5021. Then once more a summation of load case 5025 and 6025, so it was a creep and shrinkage step right after the pre-stressing then came uh, construction stage 5030 which was the application of the additional dead load then again the summation of the creep and shrinkage effects in stage 35 and finally the creep and shrinkage effects uh, in stage uh, 45 which is the creep and shrinkage steps until infinity and what is also very important to see in these combinations is that in this combination always just a partial cross-section was considered according to the stages following the changes within the cross-section. Okay, then this definition block of the combination is done and will be printed in the report browser as a separate block. And then in a new chapter in the report browser, the summation of the GPC effects will be printed as well. For that purpose, we are creating new combinations as well, such as we are summing up the effects of the self-weight, so the action G. We also summarize the effects of the pre-stressing and finally the creep and shrinkage effects. This block as a whole will be printed again in the report browser. Then starts a new block uh, in the AQB and also in the report browser where we calculate the stresses in every construction stage.
what you can see here in the comp command is a so-called table format input in which we add the command and the parameters in one line without any values and in the line below we enter the value for the corresponding parameters. If a parameter is the same for every input in the second line then we must add it with an equal sign. For example here we say that the load case the stresses to be stored will be 7010 and the part of the cross section that we are about to use is as in construction stage 10. Basically in the first combination line we create a very simple combination we summarize the stresses coming out or received from load case 5010 only and store it in load case 7010. Okay, this is nothing more than a stress copy into a new load case. However, in the next combination, we combine together all of the stressed stranges that happened until construction stage 15 and we store it into a new load case, namely 7015. That means we summarize the differential load case 5010 together with the differential load case 5015 and the internal stress case 6015. Then very similarly we create a new combination to summarize the stresses until stage 20, then until stage 21 and then in the next line until stage 25. In this line I would like to point out something extra or new again in the syntax. The construction of the command comb is so that you can only give six load case within one line. If you want to consider a seventh load case in the combination then you must continue or you must add a value and and then you can enter the seventh load case like for example in this case we entered 6025. Then we continue with the combination 7030, 35, 45. So basically we calculated all of our construction stages, I mean the stresses in our all individual construction stages. So it is practical now to create an envelope of these combinations and this is exactly what we are going to do with command comp g max and storing the results in 7999. As it is also stated in the manual, you may also define for every block of combinations two special load cases or load case numbers via the combinations g max and g min with LCST, then the maximum and the minimum values of the results will be stored via these load case numbers in the same format as for the other combinations. So basically we have created our envelope for the selected beam 20,017 and 35 and the results for these selected beam elements will be plotted in the report browser with the help of PROG results. You can see if we scroll down after the AQB run where it is ending a new uh, program block will start. You just need to even scroll down a little bit and then you will find the program results. And without going into details here you can see that basically in the program results we are creating pictures for representation in the output. For every load cases that we stored 7010, 15, 20 and so on and so forth. For the beam element 20,017 and for the beam element 20,035. And after the PROG results you can see that a new AQB will be triggered. And in this AQB the input is exactly the same except the selection of the beam. As you can see in this AQB run all the groups has been selected with group minus which means all the groups to be selected. 
This whole AQB run is necessary because actually we just selected two beams to be calculated and the stressed to be shown in the report browser. However, we need the 7000 load cases for every beam to be generated in the database and therefore a total new module AQB was run here. For the same reason, a last AQB is triggered. Again, the input is the same. The summation of the self-weight type of actions are calculated and stored in load case 7001. Also, the summation of the effects of the pre-stress and the creep and shrinkage. But in this case, again, it is calculated for every beam element in the system. As you can see from the three end statements at the end of the underscore CSM dot file, we also reached the end of this video. And I'm going to continue with the overview of the output of this underscore CSM dot in the report browser. In this video, we are going to discuss the output of the construction stages in the report browser. After having run the construction stages task, which we already did, you just need to simply right click on the graphical task and choose the reports from the drop down list. And the report browser will be open for us. And first, on the left side, we can see the summary of the construction stages. Basically, this gives us an overview about our input. I'm not going to go through all of these because it was already explained in the previous videos. The first interesting output to be reviewed could be the development of the creep factor. We can see, for example, the material number one and the fee value development along time. We can see the same picture for material 11, which is exactly the same. We created it for the material of the pier. And similarly, we can find a very nice picture about the shrinkage value, the epsilon, along the time. Then if we scroll down, we will also find how these creep values were calculated for the beams in group 10 and 20 made out of material 11 and number 1. You can find in this table uh, the notional size of the cross sections which are exactly 2 times the area of the cross section divided by the perimeter of the cross section. This information is necessary to be able to calculate the creep values and since we are having different cross sections, these H0 values, these uh, notional size, are different. Then in the top part of this table you can find the duration of the creep. Here for example you can find the T0 value, then the first creep steps which takes 28 days, then the second one again 28 days, the third one again 28 days and finally the last creep and shrinkage step which takes 30,000 days. Altogether it takes 30,084 days. You will also see the age of the concrete when the creep and shrinkage effect start to act. Here you can see for example that the first creep and shrinkage step happened at the age of 7 days of this concrete. Then the next uh, creep step happened at 35 days old concrete and other 28 days just passed so the next creep step happened at day 63 then the next one at 91 and so on and so forth. From this information the corresponding creep values for the certain creep step will be calculated for example 0 0.58 for the peer cross section in construction stage 15, then for this cross section later on in construction stage 25, an additional 0 0.13 should be added, and then in construction stage 35, another value 0 0.09 should be added to this value. 
Finally, in the last creep and shrinkage step, the 1.02 value should be added to these values. And this is how we are going to get the overall value of 1.82. The reason why you can see many lines here for the beams in group 10 is that at every time when there is a change in the cross section and a possible new load will be introduced to the system, a new creep function will be calculated and be used for the consideration of the creep and shrinkage effects. If we scroll down the report, we will find a very similar table to assess the shrinkage values. Please pay attention that the values will be presented 10 on the power of minus 6. So when you see, for example, in the table minus 226, it means 2.62 pro mil shrinkage. And finally, we can see an overview about the used load cases, what we already discussed. Then in the output will be the ASC AQB outputs, one after another. These modules doesn't contain too much information in the report browser. What we can find in the ASA output is the time-dependent stiffness development of the concrete, for example. We can see in the table how the material number 1 and 11 developed during time. What I mean by that is how the E-modules of these concrete materials were developed uh, during time. Then we can also find a sum of reaction a loadings table in the output. If I click on it or if I scroll down, then we can see here the sum of reaction and loadings. Of course, for this particular load case 4010. Then in the forthcoming AQB run, we will find some information if we open up the chapters, but basically they are referring to the used materials and the chosen uh, code. So after the information of the ASC and AQBs we can find one SOFI load. Basically it only shows our input data of the SOFI load module where we uh, rename the secondary effects into load case 16021. So basically until the SOFI load module output uh, these were just the general information about the CSM and now comes the most important information. In the check print of the AQB first we can see the used materials and the selected beams. And in the following table we can see the considered load cases, which we also saw by the way in the underscore CSM LF dot. However, in this table we can also find the unfavorable safety factor, the favorable safety factor, and the corresponding psi values. If we scroll down, we will find the elastic, elastic stress check table, which shows the maximum stresses in the various materials, for example, in material 1, material 2, and material 4, which is the pre-stressing steel. And a corresponding legend to this table can be also seen. This helps you to understand the information in the table. So this table basically shows the envelope of the stresses and how the stresses were calculated coming in the next tables and this is what I would like to elaborate a little bit. First we can see the cross-section properties. This shows the properties of the first selected beam which was 20, 000, sorry, 200,017. The corresponding cross-section is number 101. In the first line we can see the gross cross-section properties. It means without any duct holes or without any reinforcement. The gross area is, as you can see, 3.93 meters square. The EY inertia is 0 0.5576 meter on the fourth power and the IZ is 5.826 meter on the fourth power. Also very important that we can see and find the location of the center of gravity of the cross section, which is in the local y-direction 0 millimeter, 
but in the local z direction is 487.6 mm. Now in the forthcoming three lines we can see cross-section properties again but this time we can see the three different stages of the cross-section. The first one is the introduction of the cross-section to the system. The second one is the pre-stressing of the cross-section or the system and the last one is the grouting of the cross-section. Basically the introduction and the pre-stressing have the same properties so it means when we introduce the cross-section or this very beam element to the system the duct hole is already within the cross-section therefore the area of the cross-section and the IY IZ values are smaller than the gross cross-section also please notice because it's very important when you calculating the internal forces in the cross section that the location of the center of gravity has changed to 484.6 mm. The next stage of the cross section is the pre-stressing. At this point still the duct hole is in the cross section without grouting therefore it is the same as the introduction phase. Then in the last stage of the cross-section it is grouted, so we will find the properties of the cross-section as grouted and the tendon it is inserted or can be found in the duct hole and therefore the properties of the cross-section such as the area, the IY value, the IZ value will be higher than the original gross cross-sectional properties and it is absolutely reasonable if you think about it because now in the duct hole we have a steel material namely the tendon material and the ratio between the E modulus of the tendon material and the concrete material is roughly 7 so if the duct hole is filled with a special steel material then finally you will get higher area value and higher IY value and higher IZ values. Also of course it's going to change the position of the central of gravity. Previously we saw that because of the hole the center of gravity moved upwards a little bit and as the hole was grouted and the tendon material was inserted into the hole then the center of gravity of the cross-section moved downwards a little bit compared to the original position of the gross cross-section. I would like to mention that these small changes in the local uh, Z coordinate of the center of gravity plays a very important role when you are calculating the internal forces for example from the pre-stressing. Then if we move on to the next table we will find the selected stress locations within the cross-section. First we can read the ID of the points such as for example bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right. In the next columns at Y and Z you will find the location of the stress points measured from the origin of the local coordinate system. Then in the forthcoming two columns at VY sorry WY and WZ you will find the section modulus of the current stress point and with the help of this section modulus you can calculate the normal stresses simply dividing the bending moment with the corresponding section modulus. These first two columns WY and WZ contains the information or the section modulus referred to the gross cross section. The following columns in pairs shows the WY and WZ values in the above mentioned three stages of the cross section. So the WYCS0, WZCS0 refers back to the CS0, CS and 0. The WYCS1 and WZCS1 refers back to uh, the second stage of the cross-section as you can see here CS1 
And finally, the last two column refers to the third stage of the cross section. So basically, in these two columns, we have all the information to be able to calculate the normal stresses in the cross section. We have the A value, we have the W y wz values in all the stages of the cross section and we also have the location of the center of gravity of the cross section if we further scroll down we will find a table about the tendons the tendons cannot be assigned to a group that's why we can see here group z we will find tendon material being number four then in the next two columns we will find the location of the tendon in the selected beam element, which means measured from the origin of the coordinate system in y direction there is 0 mm. In the local uh, z direction it is 1099.2 mm. Then we will see and find the three values, the force in the tendon, the area of the tendon and the stress within the tendon. Of course these three values are in connection with each other so for example if I divide the p-value with the area of the tendon then I must receive the sigma p. Finally in the last three columns we will find the components of the pre-stress in the selected beam element. What we can see is the px is not e exactly the same as the p-value. This is reasonable because I think where we selected the beam element the tendon is not exactly horizontal but it has some kind of an inclination. That is why we can see uh, z components as well. But of course in the transverse direction there isn't any force. Now if we scroll down we will find how the normal stresses were calculated in the selected beam element. In the first column of this table we will find the state of the cross section. Then in the second column we will see the load cases. Please notice that these are the solo load cases which means these are extracted from the differential load cases or with other words from the 5000 load cases. Then, to be able to calculate the normal stresses, we can find the normal force in the beam element, the MY bending moment, and the MZ bending moment. Then, from the internal forces, we will calculate the stress in the bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right stress points. And also, we will be able to see the stress in tendon 1, tendon 2, and then the table continues in tendon 3. So what you can see here is that basically the full table cannot be printed on a A4 portrait oriented page and therefore we must continue it below the original table and the S, the load case, the N, MY, MZ are repeated and then comes a new column, tendon 3. You can also see this uh, from the different type title of the table. Here we can read normal stress 2 and here is the first part normal stress 1. Okay now let's go through the stages. So the first construction stage is the installation of the piers. Then comes the first creep steps but since our beam element is not activated we are not going to find any stress value either. Then in the next construction stage it is the installation of the superstructure. Right away we will find a big MY bending moment from the sulfate of the structure. Then in the next construction stage we will see the effect of pre-stress. A huge normal force has been introduced to the system together with a corresponding high MY bending moment. Purely from the pre-stress we are going to get negative stresses at the bottom left, bottom right po stress points, but positive values in the top left, top right stress points. This is what we expected, so everything is fine because our beam element is selected in the middle of the first pan. And we will find also the corresponding stress values in tendon 1, 2 and then in tendon 3. 
then comes the first creep step after having pre-stressed the structure and the creep and shrinkage effects are acting against the pre-stressing as you can see from the different side of the normal force but it will increase the effect of the negative bending moment in the middle of the first pan which is also reasonable and we can find the corresponding stress values at the stress points and in the tendon and so on and so forth we can follow along if we want all the remaining construction stages so these were the stresses the normal stresses from the differential load cases load case 5000 then in the forthcoming three lines we can find a summary of the self-weight type of actions the pre-stress type of actions and the creep type of actions basically what happens is that a summation has been undertaken from the differential load cases above and printed at the right type of action for example the self-weight type of action doesn't cause any normal force in the cross section which is fine the summation of the normal force from the pre-stress is only coming from the stage pre-stressing which is also fine and the summation of the effects from the creep and shrinkage that caused normal force in the cross section can be obtained if we summarize the 46.9 plus the 10.2 plus the 299.3 kilonewton similarly we can summarize the bending moment and why if we add together the 4866.47 kilonewton meter and the self weight of the asphalt layers which is 790.32 kilonewton meter we will obtain the 5656.79 kilonewton meter the summation of the pre-stressing effects of course it's only coming from the pre-stress and if we summarize the minus 60.85 11.12 and the 38.01 kilonewton meter we will end up at minus 11.72 kilonewton meter from the creep effect similarly the other columns are summarized as well after the summation according to the GPC effects we will find the calculation of the normal stresses again but in this case according to the 4000 load cases as you can see it is written in the table sum which refers to the accumulative load case 4010, 4015, 4020 and a continuation of this table can be also found if we scroll down here we will find the summed load case and we can follow the results of tendon 3 as well but now I will go back and show you and go through the summation of the 4000 load cases first let's investigate the normal force as you can see the installation of the pier doesn't make any normal force in our cross section neither the creep effects because our cross section hasn't yet been installed then the installation of our cross section doesn't make any normal force in the cross section but the first creep step reduces it then the effect of the additional self fade doesn't change the normal force in the cross section then we can see some kind of a decrease in the normal force again due to the creep until traffic opening and then finally a more severe decrease in the normal force in the cross section from the creep effects until time infinite if we look at now the m by bending moment change we will find the first value at the installation of the superstructure when we get 4866.5 ish kilonewton meter in the cross section this huge bending moment will be decreased by the pre-stress more to the half of it and then the creep steps will further decrease the m5 bending moment in the cross section then the additional weight of the asphalt layers again increases the bending moment in the cross section 
and the forthcoming creep steps will enhance these MY bending moments. What is it also worth reviewing is the stress change in tendon 1 and tendon 2. They are basically the same, so in the pre-stressing stage the stress in tendon 1 and 2 is 1033.85 megapascal. Then of course after the first creep step this stress will be reduced. When we introduce the asphalt layer then the stress in the tendon will be increased. Then in the creep step until the traffic opening we can see again a further reduction in the stress of the tendon. Finally in the creep step until time infinite we can see a more severe reduction in the stress of the tendon. So now we have the overview of the normal stresses in the first selected beam. If we further scroll down the page we will find the same output of the secondly selected beam which is located over the support. Now of course I'm not going to go through the results because it is exactly the same as for the beam in the first pan, meaning the way how the normal stresses are calculated. Instead I'm going to continue with showing the results. If I simply click on the results chapter you can see that there are some pictures in an A4 paper format but we can have a better overview of these A4 pages or basically the pictures if we click on the graphics tab on the left side. Then I have selected the CS10, so the construction stage 10, and the first selected beam is 200,017 act x0 meter. And the name of the construction stage is installation of the pier. So it is reasonable that we cannot see any normal stress on the right side in our cross section because it is not yet activated. The same is true for the next construction stage 15 but we will see some stresses in construction stage 20 when we install the superstructure. So basically in the graphic on the right side as we expected we can see some compression stresses in the concrete at the top fiber of the cross section being equal with 4.29 megapascal and in the bottom fiber we can see 6.77 megapascal maximum tension in the concrete and we can also see the corresponding steel rebar steel stress in the bottom reinforcement layer and also in the top reinforcement layer. But you can also notice that this is a linear stress check, meaning that the concrete is not in a cracked condition. You can also see this from the shape of the stress diagram. However, it is allowed to make a linear summations of the stresses when in the SLS state, in the last stage of the structure, the concrete will be in fully compression. If I click on the next stage, the pre-stress stage, we can see how big is the influence of the pre-stressing since now the maximum tension force in the concrete dropped to 1.51 megapascal. Then if we look at the first script step after the pre-stressing, we can see that the tension is further reduced in the concrete. Then when we added the asphalt layers again the stress is increased in the concrete. Then in the creep steps until the traffic opening the tension force in the concrete increased a bit. Then in the final creep step which lasts until time infinite we can see a further increase in the tension of the concrete. So we can see here the statement that the concrete should be fully in compression in the last stage is not fulfilled. We should increase the pre-stressing force in the tendons to fulfill this criteria. And of course the same kind of pictures regarding the normal stresses 
are printed in the following graphics for the secondly selected beam element. However, I'm not going to go through the stages of the second beam. Instead, I'm going back to the results tab to see if I left out anything. I will just simply close back the chapters and basically after the results we have an AQB output where we can see also the very same uh, output, the considered load cases, the maximum uh, and minimum stresses stored in this 7999 load case but in this case this table presents the maximum stresses for all of the beam in our system and not just for the selected two beams. Similarly if I click on the AQB sum of the GPC effects now the table is presenting the values for all of the beam elements in the system and not just for the selected ones. Okay, I think uh, we have overviewed the output of the construction stages and now we are going to continue with looking at the results of the result sets in a table format in the next video. In this video I would like to show you the results of the result sets in a table format after having run the CSM. I am still working on the model called PTC underscore bridge dot sophistic which can be found on your desktop in the subfolder named PTC underscore bridge. However, this model file can also be found in the corresponding model file folder of this chapter. As you can see, after the construction stages I have created an interactive result viewer file. The way how I created it is uh, going to be covered a little bit later in the course. Now it is more important to see the output of this task, so let's right click on it and choose the reports from the drop down list. If you do so, the report browser will be open and the results will be presented in it. So below the results tab, if I select the first line, then on the right side the first result set that had been generated at the first placement on the left side, the spring results will be presented in the table. In the first column we can see the load case numbers, in the second column we can see the title of the load cases and also the output, meaning the internal forces in the spring first, in the global x, global y, global z directions, then the deformations in the spring in the global x, global y, global z directions. And finally the rotation of the springs about the global x, global y and global z. The following table shows in a very similar fashion the results of the other result sets such as the result set at the first placement on the right side then if we scroll down we will find the result set that had been generated at the second placement on the left side, then at the second placement on the right side and so on and so forth. These tables give you also a nice overview about the results in the result sets. Now I will close back the report browser and go back to SSD. And here I have created two interactive graphics to represent the MY bending moments of the superstructure in the construction stages and also a second interactive graphic to represent the normal force in the pier in the construction phases. Again, the way how I created this interactive graphic is not important at the moment. Please just simply right click on it and choose the reports from the drop down list. If you do so, the report browser will be open and the results will be presented on graphics. So it is better to click on the graphics tab and scroll through the graphics or the pictures. What we can see in the graphics is the superstructure. We can also read it from the legend, sector of system group 20. This means that I have selected only the group 20 to be presented in the graphics. 
and I'm presenting the beam elements bending moment MY internal force in load case 5010. And the graphic shows no values found, which is correct because in the construction stage 10, this group hasn't been yet activated. The case is similar in case 15, in construction phase 15, because in these two stages or phases only the pier was activated. Then in construction stage 20, we can see the bending moment diagram obtained from the installation of the superstructure, meaning the activation of group 20, and we can see the maximum positive bending moment in the first span and in the second, second span being equal with 5042 kN meter and we have a higher negative bending moment at the middle support minus 8025. If we click on the second graphic now we are going to see the forthcoming stage namely the pre-stressing. We can see that the pre-stressing causes different sign of bending moment so here we can see a minus 3027 meter in the spans and the positive 2820 meter above the middle support and so on and so forth. We can go through the construction stages, for example stage 25 which shows the bending moment from the first creep and shrinkage effect then construction stage 30 with the additional asphalt layers, then the bending moment diagrams of the second creep step until the traffic opening and finally the last creep step until time infinite. Now let's go back to SSD and let me rep represent to you the normal force in the pier. If you simply select the second interactive graphic and right click on it and choose the reports then you will be directed back again to the report browser and then again click on the graphics tab and on the first graphic. If we zoom in a little bit then we can read the legend of uh, the graphic which says sector of system group 10 which means that in the graphic I have only activated group 10 which is the pier and what is presented is the internal force of the beam element, namely the normal force of the beam element, in load case 5010. So what we can see in the first picture is that from the installation of the pier there will be roughly 250 kN compression in the pier. Then in the forthcoming creep step there will be no normal force in the pier at all. This is reasonable since uh, the pier at this stage is a statically determined structure. So there will be no internal force in the pier caused by the crimp and shrinkage effects. Then in the next stage from the installation of the superstructure of course there will be a huge normal force in the pier. If we continue and now have a look at the pre-stressing construction stage 5021 we can see a slight normal force tension in the pier then in the forthcoming creep and shrinkage step we can see slight compression in the pier from the additional asphalt layers in construction stage 5030 there will be some normal force in compression again in the pier Finally, in the two creep and shrinkage steps, we can see a slight change in the normal force of the pier. After having reviewed these interactive graphics, now I went back to SSD and in the next video I'm going to explain you the control option of the construction stage manager. In this video I'm going to show you and explain the control option of the construction stage manager. Basically these control options can be set if you double click on the construction stage manager graphical user interface. Basically these control settings can be set if you double click on the construction stages graphical task.
and then from the open dialog box you simply go to the control parameters tab and here we can see what options do we have to control the analysis of the construction stages. Let's go through these settings. So the first one is the dead load activation. On the right side you always see the default setting. So at the moment the dead load will be activated automatically when a group is activated in a certain construction stage. If you want you can change this behavior by simply clicking on this opportunity and the drop down box will be open and you can also select no activation. The no activation in this case means that a certain group will be activated but its self weight will be not and then you need to provide somehow the self weight of this activated element to the structure. Of course 90% of the cases we use the automatic activation so I leave it as it is. By the way for this example file I'm always going to use the default settings. I just want to show you what possibilities you have. So in the second line we need to select the module for the creep and shrinkage. This means we can select the sophistic module with which we would like to analyze the creep and shrinkage effects. For quad elements uh, you can only use module ASE, there is no other possibilities. However, for beam elements as you can see you can choose between AQB or module ASE. By default the system recognizes what type of elements do you have in the system and will automatically use the most suitable module. So I'm suggesting you to use the depending on the system option. The next control parameters that can be set is the creep and shrinkage for beam elements. Here we can choose between two methodology, the standard creeping or the advanced creeping. From version 2018 the advanced creeping is used as the default and in this methodology new creep values or we can say new crimp functions are calculated individually for each load introduction or removal in the system. If you want to know more about the creep models in the construction stage manager please refer to the CSM manual. For now just leave uh, the default settings the advanced creep. The next control setting is the tendon relaxation which is normally automatically activated. If we drop down the list we can say no activation or automatic activation. The next control option is the formwork placement which we already discussed at the beginning of the CSM chapter. The default value is in the system position but as you may remember we can choose with the original inclination or tangential cantilever er erection and so on and so forth. Now we will keep the in-system position default value. In the next settings you can also request from the software to calculate the cast-in load cases for comparison. By default it is uh, set to not to calculate these load cases. Also it is selected to calculate the stress results for all stages if you want to. You can even control the type of the analysis. By default it is set to linear. If you drop down the list then you can see that we can choose from the including nonlinear effects and full geometrical nonlinear effects. The second option refers to the second order analysis. So a geometrical nonlinear analysis is possible to undertake according to second order However, it is also possible to undertake a full geometrical nonlinear analysis, which means according to the third order. The default setting is the linear one. In addition to that, you can also activate material nonlinear properties. If I drop down the list, you can simply select activate or inactivate the material nonlinear properties. The default setting is the inactivate. Finally, the last important control option is the stiffness evaluation of the concrete, which is set to automatic activation. 
It means that the stiffness evaluation of the concrete will be automatically considered in the analysis. If you want, of course, you can deactivate it, but the default value is the automatic one. So this was the overview of the control settings graphically available in the dialog box. But of course, these control settings can be given with text input. Let me show you how. Then the input of the construction stage manager will be visible. And as you can see, here we can find all the control options that I have mentioned, starting with the control command and then option DL or beam or creep or relaxation and so on and so forth. However, through the graphical user interface, not all the control options can be entered. In other words, there are control parameters that can only be added via text input. For example, with module CSM, you can also undertake the design of the beam elements or the quad elements in the system. In this design procedure, sometimes you need to instruct different modules directly from module CSM. One way you can achieve this is to control, for example, module ASE with the command control ASE text and then in apostrophe the command that is valid in module ASE. Or similarly, you can control module AQB if you enter control AQB text then between the apostrophe you must enter a command that is valid in module AQB. Similarly, in module BMS, which is the module for designing the quad elements, you can enter a command, control BMS text, and between the apostrophe, again, one command that is valid in module BMS. These controlling options, for example, it's not possible to enter within the graphical user interface of module CSM. Or, for example, it's also not possible to add a file name to the generated CSM file. However, with the control file option, you have the possibility to create a file with a certain file name that you are entering in the project folder. We are going to see how it goes during the CSM design procedure of the elements in the system. We are going to export the instruction for the design procedure into a file which name will be, for example, project name underscore ULS dot dot file. Finally, I would like to point out one more additional function that cannot be reached via the graphical user interface of CSM, namely the partial pre-stressing of a member which can be achieved by using the parameter fuckp. For example, if I would like to use only the 60% of the pre-stress in the first construction stage or the first pre-stressing stage and the remaining 40 in a later construction stage, the way how I can do that is to set up a construction stage 11, for example, as type p and the command cs contains a parameter fact which basically nothing else than a factor for the pre-stressing value and in this case I need to set it to 0 0.6 to reach the 60% of pre-stress and then later on in another construction stage for example in 21 I set up as type p again I need to use the parameter fuck p equals 1.0 so this means that the full value of the pre-stress will be reached in this stage but it's also very important to set the ICS1 parameter to stage 11 which parameters states that the pre-stressing started in construction stage 11. So with this additional function, I would like to conclude this chapter about the CSM. And in the next video and also in the next chapter, we are going to discuss the design procedure with module CSM, which starts with the superpositioning with CSM. And this is exactly what I'm going to show in the next video.